Good morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First step in New Hampshire. Trump retreats strong call for death penalty for opiate traffickers. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Dr. Robert Marshall and the team at Dental Center have been changing people's lives since 1979. Aesthetic Dental and Dr. Marshall does amazing work. I have been to other dentists before. It's great to be back in the beautiful state of New Hampshire. President Trump returned to a familiar primary spot, Manchester Community College. It all started right here in New Hampshire because I see what you're going through. About as bad as there is anywhere in the country. And I said I'd be back, and we are back. In a room filled with invited guests and several cabinet members, including Attorney General Jeff Sessions, the president applauded law enforcement. I love tough guys. We need tough guys. Calling for stiffer sentences, including the federal death penalty for some drug traffickers. We don't get tough on the drug dealers. We're wasting our time. Just remember that. We're wasting our time. And that toughness includes the death penalty. He promised increased funding for prevention and treatment, access to Narcan, a commercial campaign to educate children, a new website, crisisnextdoor.gov, and funding to develop non-addictive painkillers. And the president invited Jim and Jean Mosier from East Kingston to the national stage. Their son, Adam, died after becoming addicted to prescription painkillers. He got hooked on it and had to go to the street eventually, and he found fentanyl, and um, he's been gone for two and a half years, and we miss him every day. The president called on Congress to help make and fund some of these ideas, so many proposals are not set in stone. Live in the studio, Gene Mackin, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Schools on holiday weekend. Districts face challenges due to snow days. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. It's really tough to make up those days when the school is gruelingly hot and we're stuck here at the end of the year. So definitely weekends or vacation time would be best. The reality is now sinking in. There will be a painful price to pay for all those snow days. This has been an unusual winter. Uh, the storms are coming late. They're coming one after another. Stoughton students have already missed six days due to winter's wrath. Superintendent Marguerite Rizzi is crunching the numbers. So we have to have 180 days, and they have to happen before June is over. So we have two more days in June. We have the 28th and the 29th. If we had two more snow days, we would still be within those parameters. In Chelmsford, they've also exceeded their snow days. The final day of class here is currently scheduled for June 29th. To make up the day missed last week, school officials are now considering sending students to class on Good Friday and, if necessary, a Saturday in April and in May. It would be helpful to have that plan already in place before we get to this point because it is like every few years we have this problem. Meanwhile, it's almost decision time again for school officials all over New England. Oftentimes we can decide to cancel the night before so people can make plans, but this storm is a little bit unpredictable. You know, some districts are also turning to so-called blizzard bags. That means giving kids at-home assignments to try to avoid those days at the end of June. 
Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Municipal snow budget declining with more snow possible. Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8, Aaron Dixon. Savings Bank, we take the word mutual seriously, helping our customers get the lending they need to run their businesses better. We've been here for over 190 years and we'll be in it together for 190 more. Saco and Bitterford Savings. It's been, a, it's been a difficult winter. We've had some major storms. Three storms in two weeks, plus a fourth now possibly on its way, equals zero money left in many towns' public works departments. Uh, my overtime budget has been expended and exhausted, and I'm over that right now. Uh, my contracted equipment is over right now. Uh, my vehicle repairs and salt are both a little bit under at this point, so uh, any more storms will be over on all four lines. But although spring arrives Tuesday, a midweek storm could keep the feel of winter around a bit longer. And the director of South Portland Public Works says they will be ready. The city of South Portland has a snow winter snow reserve. So if I go over on my wintertime uh, budget, I can pull from the reserve. I can have the council request the council to pull from the reserve. So we'll be fine. We'll be able to plow streets and uh, people will be able to get around. But it's not just the budget that's exhausted. At, at this point, the crew's waiting for winter to be over. They're not looking forward to any more storms. When they were talking about this one coming in this week, they were all hoping it's going south. So uh, they're, they're pretty tired of it. South Portland says that nearly all of the past five winters have been long and expensive, but they're hoping that that high spring sunshine melts away all of this March madness pretty quickly. Live in South Portland tonight, Aaron Dixon, WMTW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Trump only cares about specific defense in specifically industries, says former IMF chief economics. When Trump says the U.S. runs a trade defense with Canada, he really means the U.S. runs a manufacturing or goods trade defect, says Rager um, Rajan. A trade su surplus in services didn't enter the equation because services go to the guys in the cities, not the constitutions that are manufacturing goods, he said. Ray Gan Jan called the U.S. performance to be guarded beyond narrow measures given that the trade defense is set to get larger. The U.S. administration is concerned with specific trade defense in specific regions of the United States, rather than looking at trade balances overall, according to a former chief economics of the International Monetary Fund. What investigators are looking for to crack the Austin serial bomb case. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. The way and the what. They come from the where. Which do you prefer? Cold. 
cold toes or wet hair. And if you and I, we could only choose one, it would not be the same, it would be close by a ton. Like the turn that you made or his favorite band's name, we are what we choose and it's never the same. When you play outside, no matter the weather, what sets you apart is what brings us together. Visit jpeakresort.com slash deals to get $200 of vacation extras. Another bomb rocking the city of Austin, Texas. There was a loud explosion on the scene. The fourth explosion in less than 20 days. I don't understand why this is happening. This entire neighborhood on lockdown. Federal agents and police sweeping the area. This neighborhood is still um, being locked down right now for safety. We're doing this in overabundance of caution so that we can keep this neighborhood safe while we process the scene. Authorities responding to a blast potentially caused by a tripwire injuring two men in their 20s. It's a real situation now. It's not, you know, oh, don't touch any packages. It's like, no, seriously. The latest blast comes 17 days after the first reported explosion just a few miles away. Police have now followed up on more than 700 phone calls about suspicious packages in the Austin area. We're pushing the message out that we need every tip, every piece of information. However inconsequential you may think it is, that may be the one piece of evidence that we need. Authorities are now investigating if last night's attack was a response to this press briefing. Today that there has been an increase in the reward. The blast triggered just six and a half hours after the Austin Police Department offered $115,000 for any tip leading to the arrest of a suspect. Police worry these bombings are meant to send a message. Investigators say the bombs were made with nails and other metal pieces as shrapnel, and the fact that the bomber was able to move the packages without detonating them shows the suspect is highly skilled. Now authorities worry they could have a well-trained serial bomber on their hands. Maggie Ruley, ABC News, New York. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Tuesday. And I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.